Good morning. Welcome to Million Nuggets Live. Mr. Fitz Houston and my voice Christ. The mighty voice Christ coming together on Tuesday. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. First place, first place. Glenda, good afternoon. Glenda, UK. UK in the house. Good afternoon, Glenda. Hey, Deanna, what's up, Deanna? Colorado in the house. Hey, man, Deanna, what's up? It's going to be all right. Like someone says, hey, Gary, Louisiana. Hey, Gary, what's up, Gary? Hey, man. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Say what? Hey, yes, Lord. Walk. Talk, pray, say. Walk, talk, pray, say. Okay, what's going on in the world? With Jesus, it's gonna be what? It's gonna be all right. No, oh, amen. Come on, Gary. Oh, saxophone. Dana, Sheriff Dana. What's up, Dana? What's up? Hey man, New York in the house. The big apple in the house. <laughs> Woo! Hey! Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Hey, Billy Greg, safe travel, Billy. Safe travel, Billy Greg. Be careful out there, man. Every time I walk, it's be Every time I talk with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Every time I pray with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. And I say, it's gonna be all right. Oh, praise God. Amen. Snurks. Amen. Snurks, Colorado. Amen. One, two punch. Snurks. Indiana. The one, two punch in Colorado. Uh huh. Uh huh. Five. Six. Six. Woo! A boom. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Woo! Oh, uh, yeah. Woo! Uh-huh. Say what? I guess, Lord. Every time I walk with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Every time I talk with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Every time I pray with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. If I say, ladies, keyboard, all ladies, keyboard, oh, a boom. Linda, welcome, Linda. Amen. Man, Linda in Texas. Hey, Texas, Linda. Hey, Linda, welcome back. Welcome back, Linda, welcome back. <laughs> Come on, ladies, Come on, ladies. Sounding good. All right, here we go. Five, six, five, six, seven, a uh, boom. Uh huh. Say what? Every time I walk with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Every time I talk with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Every time I pray with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. If I say what? It's gonna be all right. Stay together. Walk, talk, 
pray. Say, come on, come on, come on. Walk, talk, pray. Say, hey, hey. Okay, what's going on in the world? With Jesus, it's going to be what? All right. A five, six, seven, a, a boom. Uh-huh. Say what? Uh, yes, Lord. <laughs> Woo! Say it now. Uh, every time I walk with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Every time I talk with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Every time I pray with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Every time I say it, it's going to be all right. Come on, Gary. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, praise God. Woo! Hey! Uh. Say it together. Every time I walk with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Every time I talk with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Every time I pray with Jesus, it's gonna be all right. Every time I say it, it's gonna be all right. Hey, man, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. And we know why? Because we trust the Lord. It's gonna be all right when we trust you, Lord, with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we acknowledge you, Lord, and you will direct our path. In other words, come on, family, say it together. <laughs> I'll always trust you, Lord. Hey, Michael Lynn. Oh, boom. Oh, that's right. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. That's right. Keep trusting. Keep believing. And stay on fire right now. Oh, come on now. Say it together. Always trust. I'll always trust you, Lord. Uh huh. Woo! I'll always trust you, Lord. Woo! Aha. All right, come on, come on. Say it together. I'll always trust you, Lord. Oh, a boom. Ah, yes, Lord. Uh-huh. Say it. Oh, always a trust in you, Lord. Hey, come on now. Hair popping, toe tapping, body rocking. Come on, get your brace on. Get your brace on. Get your brace on right now. On Tuesday, wherever you are in the world. Ha <laughs> Yes, Lord. Woo! Praise God. Right now. Say it together. I'll always trust in you, Lord. Woo! Now, family, come on now. Say it together. I'll always trust you, Lord. Woo! Go! Ha ha! Yes, Lord. Uh huh. Woo! See you. Always a trust. Right now, Greg Melly on drums, Dana on bass, Gary Kunga drums, all laser keyboard, all laser keyboard. Are you ready, are you ready to jam? Are you ready to jam? Are you ready to jam? Five, six, seven, eight, boom! Come on, come on, come on! Woo! Bring it, bring it, bring it! Jesus. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Woo. Aha. 
<laughs> that's right, that's right. Show you right. Woo! Uh huh. Woo! Stop trusting, and we can't stop trusting because what we know what's up. We know what's up. <laughs> a long time, long time. Hadn't heard this song a long time. That's right. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Right here Tuesday, meet us live. That's right. That's right. Come on now. We get ready. Long time no jam. He walked the water. Come on, stand together. Praise God. Uh huh. Say it again. He's everything. That's right. Oh, set us free. <laughs> Sometimes in my life, it's filled with so much pain. I try to get up, I just to get knocked down again. The temptation is just so stop. I try to get a hold on me. Trying to drag me down and take complete control of me. But I, I got something, I got the power to understand. Woo! Uh, he gives me strength when I've got no will to stand. He put love in my heart, the great fool see. Uh -huh. With him in my life, I'll be the best. And then I can be his name is Jesus. Woo! Hey, Jesus. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Uh, he's everything. Instead of free. Because he died on the cross, ways you and me. <laughs> he guides my way and never lets me down when I need his help. Let's know that he's outbound. Let us pray to the Father, to the Son, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> With him in my life, what he wants me most. <laughs> oh, I got the power to get in all misery. Hey. He lets me know that his love is there for me. No need to worry, family. Uh, never no need to frown. Oh, go tell them what? Uh, the real king is in town. His name is Jesus. Oh, whoa, Jesus. Oh, whoa, Jesus. But Jesus. He's everything. Just free. Uh, because he died on the cross ways. Are uh, you and me? Uh, Say it again. Oh. He walked what uh, a common see. Uh, to the sick and to the blind that they could see. Yeah, thing. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Died of cross. Raise your me. <laughs> oh, keep walking at one, Lord. He come to see, Lord. He heal the sick. Oh, Lord. Oh, my, oh, my Lord. Praise God. He's everything, Lord. Oh, set us free right now. Because <laughs> what do we have? What do we have, family? 
No! I got the power to get in on my dream. Hey! Uh, he let me know that his love is the for me. Oh, no need to worry, family. Uh, there's no need to frown. Go tell the devil. Hey! So we'll take it in town in the name of Jesus. Oh, whoa, Jesus. Oh, whoa, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Uh, he did everything uh, set us free uh, because he died on the cross ways. You're me. Still give up. He walked with a, a conversation. Uh, he the sick uh, to the blind that they could see. Everything. Uh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I uh, got a cause. Come on, boom time. Oh, uh, boom time. Boom fast. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Pop the boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom time. Boom time. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Pop the boom. Boom, boom. Oh, boom. He walked with a. A conversation. Oh, uh, to the sick and to the blind that they could see. Everything. Uh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Down the cross, raised you me. Sin gave up. He walked with a, a conversation. Uh, to the sick and to the blind that they could see. Everything. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Ah, uh, got the cross. Raise your me. Come on down. Stand together. Stand together. Woo. To reach. A comedy. Uh, to the sick. Oh, to the blind, they can see. Amen. Oh, he is. He is. He is. And we know he is. But one thing we know for sure. No, we know for sure. One thing. I need you, Jesus. And I need you all day long. All day. All night. Around the clock, don't leave home without him. Don't go home without him. Every second, every day, I need you, Jesus, and I need you all day long. Amen, family. <laughs> as always, as always, ladies and gentlemen, get your keyboard right now. Come on, stand together. I need you, Jesus, all day long. Come on now. Here we go. I need you, Jesus. I need you all day long, all day, all day, every day. I need you, Jesus. I need you all day long. All right, divers, divers, ready, divers, you know. Woo! A yes, Lord, a Z, a Z. Woo! A yes, Lord, feeling really good. Say it. Woo! Hey, yes, Lord, your will, your way. Woo! Hey, yes, Lord, I need you, Jesus. Say it now. I need you, Jesus. I need you all day long. All day. All day. Every single day. Come on now. I need you, Jesus. I need you all day long. <laughs> Oh, glory to God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. You are the potter and we the clay. Most, Lord, what you need us to be today, Lord, every day, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in every way. We come together around the world in praise and worship your fellowship, Lord. Love you around the world. Just love you around the world, Lord, the way it should be, Lord. And we know what's up. We know what's up. Wait a minute. Starburst. 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 You already said it? Woo! Hey, yes, Lord. See a Z. Ah. Woo! Hey, yes, Lord. Feeling good. Say it. Woo! Hey, yes, Lord. Your will, your way. Woo! Hey, yes, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Say it. I need you, Jesus. I need you all day. All day. All day. Every day, Lord. I need you, Jesus. I need you all day long. Ah, glory to God. 
Oh, glory to God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And Lord, we never, we never ever let go of your unchanging hand. You're the same yesterday as today. If ever, Lord, we come together and the praise goes up and the vessels come down. We praise our way through. We praise our way through the victory over whatever we're going through right now. Praise God to whom all vessels flow. <laughs> and right now, Shabbat. Right now, Shabbat. If God, if God can do you, just open my mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Your grace, your mercy, your miracles, your blessings, your healing, everything, Lord. Oh, we can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough, Lord. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, because God is a good God. He'll turn every single thing around, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, Starburst. All right, Starburst. Praise it. <laughs> Us that put our, put us our differences, our time zones, our cultures to get together one accord to love the Lord, pray for each other, and support one another. Generate God and all, enjoy God's majesty, whatever it is sunrise, sunset, flowers, birds, trees, artwork, sculpture. God's majesty is everywhere. Prove to the world that we can coexist if we keep our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the helm, fulfilling the new coming amendments. Love the Lord, our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Number two, love your neighbor as yourself. The Mighty Warriors of Christ International Fellowship, right here, right now, on Tuesday. Cause praise is what we do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We already know, family. We already know. Praise God. Get ready for the word. Get ready for the word. Amen. Get the theme song going here. It's time to live that word every day like we do every day, family. Every day. Keep living it. Keep living it. Believe it and receive it and walk in it and talk in it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I'll be right back with the word for the day. Amen, family. Thank you, Jesus. Living by the word. Hallelujah. Come on, family. Let's say it together. Living by the word. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus.
living by the word. Hallelujah. Living by the word. Every day. Every day. All about the word. Hallelujah. Living by the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise. I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that lives in me. God is my health. I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all. I know no fear. Since God and love and truth are here in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, family. Praise God, amen. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Amen. Amen. I see Nelia. Hey, Nelia just came in. Welcome, Nelia in Missouri. Amen. I, I think I got everybody else as you came in. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, everybody, wherever you're watching from, wherever you're watching from. Amen. Amen. John is having trouble getting in right now. Uh, John is sends her love. She's she just texting me. She's trying to join us right now. The, she's having trouble. So let's unblock that right now, Father God. Unblock every airway right now, Father God. Unblock every airway. Anyone right now who's trying to join us and the devil's trying to block right now, Lord. Open every airway, Lord. Every con every confusion, every disconnection, Lord. Let it connect right now in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. We pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. So Sheila, uh, Sheila, oh, you got the scriptures until John is able to come in. Amen, Sheila. Praise God. You got that. Amen. Amen. Praise God, family. Good to see you on this Tuesday, as always. Another great lesson. Another great lesson. That's why right. we keep a hedge of protection. We keep a hedge of protection over us, a hedge of protection over the channel, a hedge of protection over the word of God. We, we, we just keep a hedge of protection over everything that has to do with the word of God. Hey, Evelyn, welcome, Evelyn, Virginia. See, we we know, especially now that the now that the channel is growing, we know the devil's mad. We know the devil's mad as the channel is increasing in numbers of of, of subscribers and viewers. The devil's mad. The devil is mad. He's still attacking. We, we we still don't have super chat. So right now, he's still trying to attack the channel to keep the block to keep the block of the channel trying to keep the channel. For making any money so all of a sudden i had this i've had this channel for 13 years all of a sudden when the channel starts growing all of a sudden all this money blocking trying to block the donations of super chat trying to block this the sales of my t-shirts uh, they're trying to block everything so we don't understand we know what's going on we know what's going on the devil can't stand increase in the body of christ he can't stand increase in the body of christ too many people being blessed right now. Too many people coming on and finding the word of God on this channel. So I understand I, I understand exactly what is going on. Amen. So we say we thank you right now in advance. We thank you for your prayers to keep us covered as we battle this, whatever, whatever this is going on right now. We just pray for us that this shall this shall be moved in Jesus' name. And John is coming, gonna come in today, and all this stuff we're dealing with with YouTube right now. We'll just keep it, keep on praying. We've been we've been through a whole lot in seven years. OG ones, twos, three, four, five, and now year seven. OG sevens. We've been through some. We've been through a lot of chaos over seven years, trying to block this channel and trying to keep the word of God from going forth. But guess what, devil? In your face, devil! We are still here. We are still spreading the gospel, and we're still praising and singing and shouting and standing still, cause God is a good God. Say or say what? Say what? God is good God. God will turn around. Uh, God is good God. He'll turn life around. Uh, boom boom. God is good God. God will turn around. Uh, God is good God. He'll turn life around. Troubles. 
bump, bump, God is good, God. God can turn around, uh, God is good, God. He'll turn your troubles around, bump, bump, God is good, God. God can turn around, uh, God is good, God. He'll turn your troubles around, everything, bump, bump, God is good, God. God can turn around, uh, God is good, God. He'll turn everything round. Bump, bump, God is good, God. God can turn around. Uh, God is good, God. He'll turn everything round. He'll turn everything round. Uh, he'll turn your troubles round. Uh, he'll turn your troubles round. Uh, he'll turn your life round. Uh, he'll turn your life round. Uh, he'll turn. Excuse me, but what will he do? He'll turn uh, your life, your health, your family, your kids, your marriage, your money, everything. He'll turn uh, every single thing, every single thing, not some things, every single thing. He'll turn everything around because God is a good God. And he'll turn every single thing around. Amen, family. Praise God. You thought I forgot. Hey, hey, you thought I forgot, didn't you? <laughs> you guys thought I forgot. We sing that song every day. We sing that song every day. I wasn't going to forget. Even if I missed it, usually I'm not going to forget that song. We need to sing that song every day because God is a good God who will turn every single thing around. Amen. I saw somebody come in uh, as I was going to start a song. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Somebody who was, I just saw somebody come in just as I was starting to sing the song. Uh, uh, who is it? Um, is it I, I, I think it's Aina. Uh, I think it says Aina, I believe. Uh, my, my, my screen is kind of small. It looks like uh, I, 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 I think it's Aina. Aina. I hope I said it right. Welcome, Aina. I just say Aina. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If I get the names wrong, Please forgive me if I get the names wrong. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Family, praise God. He'll turn every single thing around. Hey, Amy. Welcome, Amy, Michigan. Praise God. Praise God. Today's lesson. Today's lesson. Another great lesson. A kind of a kind of a continuation. Yesterday we talked about uh, Elijah, Prophet Elijah, and the widow who shared her her few little things she had left, the little food she had left. She shared it with him. She shared it with the prophet. And miracle, the food never ran out by their both being obedient to what they were supposed to do. The prophet was obedient to get to the widow, and the widow was obedient in feeding the prophet, even though they had very little there. So today's lesson is those who have, should, uh, excuse me, should, those who have, should help those who have not. See, I didn't, I didn't have no space to put all the all the title but the whole title is those who have should help those who have not but realistically if you look at the world right now if you look at the world right now that is not happening in the many cases there are people helping those who have not but i'm talking about on a one-to-one -one basis i'm talking about a one-on-one -on -one basis now we have shelters we have we have food banks we have churches that get together and feed the homeless and help people here and there, but I'm talking about a one-on-one -on -one basis. When you come against someone who someone who needs something, what is your first reaction? Is your first reaction to help them, or is your first reaction they don't need money, they don't need anything, they're just they're just acting. See, we get judgmental when it comes to people asking for something on the street. We get judgmental. Come on, shame the devil, tell the truth. Sometimes we say he doesn't look like he needs money. Hey, go get a job. You don't need the money. And sometimes we get judgmental and judge the person who has to be there and ask for money or food, whatever it is. But one day, I remember one day, I my car ran out of gas. I went to I went to get gas. I was about twenty miles from home. My car ran out of gas, and, and I I went to get the gas, and I had left all my credit cards. I switched I switched fanny packs at the time, fanny pack day. I switched fanny packs and all my credit cards were in the other fanny pack. So what was I doing? 
I went, I was standing by the gas station. Uh, uh, sir, uh, we, I, this, I'm, I'm going through something right now. I sound like somebody I, who asked me at the gas station. I said, sir, I'm, I'm dealing with a situation right now. I just need a little bit of gas. I, I'm 20 miles from home. I, I had to humble myself and ask people for just enough money to put in the car to get home. Now, I went from being the person who blesses people to a person who needs a blessing in a second. And people don't, people don't think about this. All you need is one thing. Go, all you need is one thing go wrong in your life, and you go from being a person who has to a person who has not, and all of a sudden you understand what it means to have to be humble and ask people, uh, "Can I get some food? Uh, I just need the money to put in my car to get home. I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm just. I'm not. I'm not lying. I really need money. I need money to put in my car." To get home, I left my credit cards on the table. That was that was what happened. Now I actually heard a week before, a week before, another man came up, almost the same story, and I'm I'm now I'm, I'm going to myself. I'm going now. Is this guy telling me the truth? Does he really need money? Now here I am. The week the week before, the week before, this guy is saying almost the same thing, trying to get gas at the gas station. I just need a few dollars. I just need a few dollars. And at that time, I said, well, you know, I, I don't have it. I, I really, well, okay, man, you know what? Here you go. I gave him a little bit of money for the gas. I left the gas station, but I forgot to get some water. So I came back to get more water. And the guy had, the guy had completely forgotten it was me. Came up to me as if, he came up to me as if I was never seen before. Said the same thing to me. I said, dude, uh, I just gave you some money. <laughs> for your gas oh 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 that's right you did you did thank you sir now i'm saying that because that happened one week before the next week i left my wallet home and and the, my, my credit cards on the table and i went to have to say the same thing that man said to me the week before to ask people oh i just need a few dollars to get my gas so i get home now i'm saying this because when it's time to help people when it's time to help people, sometimes we get too judgmental. We want to play the judge. Does that person really need it? Is that person really hungry? Or are they acting? Now, some people, excuse me, some people are acting. But who who are we to judge which one is acting? See, our job is to help who it looks like needs help. We can't sit there and say, that person doesn't look, does he really need help? Does he really need help? Does he really need help or is he acting? You, you, we can't go through that. Let the Holy Spirit touch you. The Holy Spirit, you'll feel something from that person. If a person is telling the truth, if a person is telling the truth, you feel a, a, a almost like an energy from the person who really is serious. Now, some people who are just playing, who are really good actors, sometimes they kind of have a, a kind of, of a, a fakeness about the way they ask you. Even then, even then, you can't tell for sure, is that person really in need or not? So what I start doing, you know what? I give a little something to the person. I stop trying to figure out who is acting and who's not acting, unless they're really obvious. Because my job, I'm going I'm I'm to give you scripture in just a minute. I'll give you scripture. The word says, help those who need help. I have several scriptures I'm going to share in just a minute. We are to help people who need help. We can't sit there and say, he don't need help. Does he look like he needs help? Huh? Should I help him? Should I not help him? He looks like he needs it. Now, let me tell you something. That week, I had no gas and no money. I left my car, my money home. I, it, I can't tell you how hard it was to humble myself to ask people for money to put in the car to get home. It's not easy. People are people are really rude to people who need something. I mean, people will look at you like you're dirt. You just say, I just need something to put here. I just need something for food. I've seen people look at a person who's homeless as if they don't exist. Do you understand how hard it is to ask people for money? And when the person you're asking doesn't say hello, they don't say hello. They don't say, God bless you. They look at you as if you don't exist. The worst thing you can do to somebody is don't even acknowledge 
they exist. All they have, all they have is a clothes on their back and all they have in themselves trying to hold on to hope. So when you say, God bless you, brother, even if you have no money, uh, God bless you, brother. Uh, I, I pray for you. He said, well, I, I don't need prayer. I need money. I, hey, brother, I don't have any money right now. I'm going to pray for you anyway. So we want to always have a giving heart. Even if you don't have money, have, have a giving heart to show God's love for them who don't have. And my thought is, if that person's acting, if that person's acting, they have to deal with who? God. If that person is acting like they're in need to get money or food and take it away from people who really need it, guess what? God has a surprise for them. They may one day end up being that way for real. They're acting right now like they need help to use and manipulate people, but they keep playing with God's, God's giving heart. And one day they go end up being in a real situation where they are really now in need and becoming a real situation as they were pretending a few days ago, a few weeks ago. So I stop, I stop worrying about it. And you know what? I say, I'm going to have a giving heart. I'm going to have a giving heart. If that person is playing, they have to deal with God. And I say, whoa, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to stand in the way of my blessing. And I pray for that person that he's not playing because if he's playing around, God will deal with him. So that's why I want to help us to have an open heart when we deal with people who don't have. Amen. Let, 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 let me give it. Um, the, other, the other thing is, now I gave that example first, but the other thing is sometimes, sometimes that person is an angel unaware to see if you have a giving heart. Whoa. Whoa, let me tell you. Sometimes that person asking you for money or food is an angel unaware trying to test you to see if you really have a giving heart. And you say, well, yeah, I don't have anything. Now, let me tell you something. This happened to me. This also happened to me. I, I told a guy I had no money. I got in the car. I got convicted. I went back to give the guy money, and the guy was nowhere around. I went. I thought he went. I thought he went to the store. I went to the store. He wasn't in the store. He wasn't behind the store. I looked down the street. He wasn't anywhere on the street. I said, "Wait a minute!" I just went to my car, turned around, came back to give him money. I didn't give him money the first time. I got to the car, got guilty, convicted, turned around to come back and give money, and the guy was nowhere to be found. In one minute, one minute, and this was a big street, a big parking lot. I would have seen him to be able to catch him. I got, I felt so convicted. I felt so convicted. I said, the Holy Spirit said, see, see, that was the angel to test you if you have a giving heart. And you hesitated. And guess what? Did you pass the test? Not today. <laughs> You didn't pass the day. You didn't pass the day. That was an angel testing your giving heart. And you didn't give. And guess what? Now he's gone. You can't give. That was a that was a chance you missed because you hesitated. You hesitated. Amen. Amen, Dan. So when you hesitate, then you understand that was an angel. When you go back and you can't find the person, you understand that was an angel testing you. To see if you have a giving heart. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at the scripture. Look at, uh, turn to, um, turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse, um, verses 2. Verse 2. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. It reads, do not neglect, do not neglect to show hospitality, to show hospitality to strangers. For by this, some have entertained angels without knowing it. This happens. Look, look, look what they just said. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by this, some have entertained angels without knowing it. And the purpose is to see if you're really doing what you need to do. Amen. Amen. 
Oh, oh, uh, uh, Deanna, Deanna, that's Thursday. De Deanna, save that Thursday. Don't give it away. Don't get. Don't give you. Don't give it away yet. Uh, save that for Thursday, Deanna. I don't want you to give it away yet. That's a good one. That's a good one. I, I'll give. I share. I share some today, but make sure the ones you have share them on Kingdom Biz Thursday. Amen. But I had. I had one very similar. I had one very similar. The a guy. I was coming. I was bringing my car. I was renting a car, and I came home. I had I had to drop the car off, so I went to drop the car back to the to the uh, rental car place. Now it was late night. I should have turned the car in four hours earlier. I went home to take a nap and I fell asleep. I came back to take the car back to, to the rental car place. When I got there, I got to the place and there was a man. And the, the, Deanna made me think about this. There was a man who fell out of his wheelchair. Laying on the side of the car right in front of the rental car place now this I have no idea how long this man had been laying there because he what happened He was trying to get his wheelchair up on the curb Apparently instead of getting up the curb his his wheelchair fell sideways So I have no idea how long he'd been laying there, but when I got there with a the car my turned my car in I looked and said man there's a, there's a man laying on the side of the road. What is he doing? So I came to him. I said sir. Are you okay? He said, yes, sir, I'm so glad you came by because I was trying to get on the curve and my, my, my wheelchair turned over and I've been laying here for two hours because nobody would stop to help me. He'd been laying on the ground for two hours, cars passing by, and nobody stopped to help him to understand, you think he's acting? In the middle of the night, a guy's going to lay on the side of the road in a wheelchair sideways and nobody says, are you okay? Nobody says, can I help you up? So when he, he was so glad to see me, he said, I've been laying here for two hours. I'm so glad. Can you help me up? He didn't ask for money. He was asking for help to get his chair back up, right side up. So, so sometimes the timing of where you go, God is arranging a test to make, just to see if you're going to be like the other people. The other people passed him by. So he laid there, here I came, I helped him. But the test is, are you gonna be like everybody else who looks away from the homeless? Or are you gonna be one to help the homeless or the disadvantaged? That's the test right there. A loving heart, a giving heart will help somebody in need. Don't judge them, don't judge them, help them. Now let's turn to where the, let's turn to where the word says that. Turn to Proverbs. Turn to Proverbs, chapter 28. Proverbs, chapter 28. The next scriptures are all in Proverbs. Proverbs 28. I'm going to start at verse 27. Chapter 28, verse 27 in Proverbs. Verse 27 says, He who gives to the poor will never want but he who shuts his eyes will have many curses. Whoa, praise God. Excuse me. Let's read that again. He who gives to the poor will never want. But he who shuts his eyes will have many curses. That means what? There is blessings when you help people. There are blessings for you when you help the disadvantaged. However it is, but those who shut his eyes, those who look the other way, you have more troubles coming because you look away from helping somebody who is in need. Can't worry about if they're playing or not. Help them. Like I said, don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in worrying about if they're playing around. We want to be obedient. Like yesterday, we want to be obedient to the word and have a helping heart. A giving heart. That's our focus. Now, if they're playing, like I said before, if they're playing, God will deal with them. Amen. Same chapter, uh, same same book. A turn to Proverbs twenty-two. Now, the next three scriptures are all in Proverbs. Proverbs twenty-two, verse nine. Proverbs twenty-two, verse nine. Twenty-two nine. Verse 9, he who is generous will be blessed. 
There it is again. For he gives some of his food to the poor. Say it again. He who is generous will be blessed. For he gives some food to the poor. Sometimes, sometimes I have no money, but I have a credit card. Nowadays, nowadays nobody carries cash. So many times when I see a person begging for food or money, I go in and buy them a sandwich. I say, can I get you a sandwich? Can I get you something to drink? Eat? I say, oh yeah, please. I just need some food. I'll go in and give them a sandwich. So sometimes your blessing is not just money. Sometimes they're, they're really hungry. If they're really hungry, they don't care. I take a sandwich. All I need is food. So if, if you don't have cash, because today is a credit card life. We are in a credit card world. So sometimes buy them a soda, buy them a, buy them a juice, a sandwich, whatever it is. And you're still giving and helping them. Amen. Look at uh, chapter 14, Proverbs 14. 1431, Proverbs chapter 14, 31. 1431. 1431 says, He who oppresses the poor taunts his maker. Whoa. But he who is gracious to the needy honors him. Now notice in the book, Maker is in a capital M. That means what? He who oppresses the poor taunts God. Look at that. Maker is capital. That means maker, our maker, our creator, he who oppresses the poor taunts his maker, meaning God. But he who is gracious to needy honors him, honors God. Because what? God is love. God is giving. God is love and giving and supporting people. That's what a, a loving heart is. A loving heart is a giving heart, a helping heart. God sees all this. And whether you turn away or not, or if you look down at them and act like they're dirt, if you mistreat them because you disrespect them, no matter what they have, everybody deserves respect. Excuse me. Everybody deserves respect have have nots everybody deserves respect you can't buy respect you can't buy respect that's a a trait excuse me some people don't have it some people have not even a grain of respect in the body to know what it means to help somebody i know it i sit there sometimes in my car and i watch people look at the person like dirt look down at them they got this big, nice, big car, this nice suit on, and they look down at the person without who, who has not. They look down at them like they're dirt and step over them instead of, can I help you? Here's some, here's some money, some food. Uh, God bless you, brother. Even God bless you, brother. Don't just act like they don't exist. Even if you have nothing, God bless you, brother. That gave them a joy. Somebody saw them just by seeing them have nothing. God bless you, brother. God's got you. I say that even when I don't have anything to give them. I say that. Give them some joy. Give them some hope. If you have nothing to give physically, give them some hope. God bless you, brother. God loves you. Stay with it. Stay strong, brother. God's with you. Give them a word to give them hope. And that's just, sometimes they get as excited about that as if it's money. There's one guy, one gentleman in front of one of the 7-Elevens, I, I gave, he, now he, he didn't ask for anything, but you could tell this man looked like he really needs something, but he wasn't asking anybody anything, he just stood there. So in my spirit, now see, I knew this is real because the Holy Spirit says, give him something. So the man was just sitting there and he was just kind of, he was just kind of rocking back and forth, rocking back and forth. And I said, the Holy Spirit says, give him something. So when I went, I gave, I went in and got him, I got him a, sa a sandwich. I got him a, a sandwich and a, 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 little, a little drink. I came back and said, hey, sir, have this. And he said, why? I said, oh, aren't you hungry? Yes, but why are you giving this to me? Because God told me to give it to you. God told you? Wow. He was, he was like in shock. 
that I saw him first. And then when I gave him something, he was like, he was obviously in, in need. You had no idea. You knew this the man wasn't joking. The, the way he dressed, he, might, he looked like he might have had some mental problems as well, which is why probably he didn't understand when I gave him something, some food and drink. He even asked, why did I give him that? And I, by talking to him, I could tell he was both mentally and physically in bad shape. See, we never know what people are going through on the street. But I had a good friend of mine. She, she had some hard times. She's going home. And this is family hurt. This, this testimony is family hurt. My friend was going home. I, now I'm in California. She's going home to family in New York. Her car broke down in Vegas. And nobody in the family would contact her or send her any money to help her. The lady ended up in a shelter in Las Vegas for three weeks until she got enough money working for for, for begging money and, and just asking for money. And somebody helped her to have enough money to get a bus to come back to Los Angeles where she left. Three weeks. I said, what about family? Family doesn't care about me. Wait a minute. A family will let a, a, a sibling live in the street? It won't help. I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I, I couldn't even fathom that. But that's what happened. So after three weeks of her living and homeless, she called the bus. I said, well, I'll pick, you up, I, I'll pick you up at the bus station. So I went to the bus station. So I'm looking around. I can't find her. I'm looking at the bus station. I'm looking all around. And when I found her, she was laying on the street in a fetal, fetal position. She was like this. She was on the street like this. I didn't even recognize her. I mean, she went from being a very personality, a person with a, lot, a bright personality to this. Because the trauma, the trauma of living a homeless life, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it, it gave, gave her a nervous breakdown. I almost didn't recognize her. Not just by face, her behavior was so different. I thought it was a different person. Three weeks, three weeks. Just because her car broke down and family wouldn't help her, her life turned around in three weeks to a point where I didn't recognize her. So we don't understand your life can turn around in a second. All, all you need to miss is two or three paychecks. All of a sudden, you're homeless. Unless you got a big bank account. All you need is to miss two or three paychecks in a row. And all of a sudden, you're in a bad situation, like the people on the street. So pe when people look down at people and don't understand what they're going through, that's why you don't look down at people. Because you could very easily be in the same position, the same position, needing other people to help you. Give unto others as you would have them give to you. Give unto others as you would have them give to you. If we remember that verse, that's the scripture too. If we remember to give unto others as we will want them to give to us, that, that will help us stay open-hearted. That will keep us in an open mindset to help people who are in need. Amen. Uh, last one. S uh, same chapter. Chapter 21. Same Proverbs. Chapter 21 now. 21, 13. Proverbs 21, 13. Amen, Sheila. Never look down at anyone. Be a blessing wherever you are. Amen. 21, verse 13. 21, 13. Here it is, here it is again. Hey, bro, Don. He who shuts his ear. He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will also cry himself. And not be answered. Whoa, hold up. Wait a minute. Look at this verse. Look at this verse. He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be answered. Excuse me. Drop the mic. Excuse me. Do you understand what that said? Do you understand what that just said? 
Do you understand what they just said? You, you're setting, you're sealing your own fate when you don't help the poor, when you don't help someone. And it says what? He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will himself cry and not be answered. What goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. What goes around comes around. You reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. If you sow discontent and ignore people, guess what? You'll reap it to yourself. You reap what you sow. You give goodness to people. Later on, the goodness comes back to you. If you're hateful to people, guess what? The hate is coming back to you at some point. You reap what you sow. So how are you living right now? Are you, is your life a giving life? Are you helping people? Are you helping people? Are you giving? Do you have a giving heart, a loving heart to your fellow man? If not, if not, we must correct that. If not, if you don't have that heart, we must correct that. We don't want to, you do want to reap what you sow, but reap goodness. It means you plant the seed, reap. You're sowing what? Sow is what you do. Sow is what you sow a seed. I sow seeds of giving. I sow seeds of loving. I'm helping someone. I'm sowing seeds. And later I reap the harvest, which means I give back whatever I gave. So I'm giving goodness and love and helping. So then later on, the loving and helping comes back to me and you reap a harvest. You reap, you get back what you give. You reap what you give. Give hate, guess what? You get hate. Give disrespect, guess what? You get disrespect. That's what that verse just said. You, you close your ears, close your ears to the cry of the poor. You yourself will cry and with no answer, that cry will not be answered. That's the essence of that verse. That's the essence of the verse we just read in Proverbs 21, 13. Now look back at Deuteronomy. Go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Chapter 15, Deuteronomy chapter 15, back to the Old Testament, 15, 11, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 11, 15, verse 11, Deuteronomy, it reads, for the poor, the poor will never cease to be in the land. Therefore, I command you, saying, you shall open your hand to your brother, to your needy, and poor in the land. Here it is again. Here it is again. Verse 11. For the poor will never cease in the land. Therefore, I command you, you shall freely open your hand to your brother, to your needy, and poor in the land in your land there it is that's the mindset right there that is the mindset right there there's always gonna be there's always gonna be the homeless the poor there's always gonna be somebody who needs something there's always gonna be people who have not and the people who have the people who have like the title says people who have should help people who have not this verse we just read, your mindset, your, if you have, help someone who has not. And that comes in many, that comes in many levels. That comes in many levels. You don't have to be rich. If you, if you have a home and you see somebody who's homeless, that you're not rich. You have a home and they don't. So what you do is just be nice to them. Give them blanket. Give them a, a that's one of the verses. No, the other verses. Give them blanket, a coat, something to keep warm, a, something to keep warm as they freeze out there in the, over, an overnight. You're in a warm home. They're out there sleeping on a, on a, on a concrete sidewalk. And you see that. And where it says, if you see your brother freezing, offer a coat, a blanket, a something to help him stay warm. See, it's it's all around us. Amen, Snurks. Amen. See, see, see I, 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 Snurks, make sure you say, share this on Thursday. Amen, Snurks. Share this. Because see, when you deal with the needy, when you deal with the, the those who have not, 
we must have an open heart. As, as Snurks and Deanna know, we must have an open heart to help people who have not. And the reason you help people is because, like I said earlier, you can very easily be you. All you need is a few things go wrong in your life. And next thing you know, you're the one who's needy. So the reason we always open our heart, you open your heart to help others and you care for them is that they need that as much as the things. People need to feel love and hope as much as they need money and food. Say it again. People need to feel love and hope as much as they need food and money. Love and hope, love and hope gives them a purpose. If you physically have nothing and you give a person hope, God bless you, brother. God's got this. God's got you. You gave them hope. And that, that gives them strength to live another day. They felt like giving up. And you say, God bless you. Let me pray for you, brother. And you give them, you give them a prayer. And all of a sudden, thank you, brother. I needed that. And that was more than money. A prayer, a word of a word of hope. A, 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 a God bless you. All these things are ways of giving as well to people who have not. Because they also don't have joy. You have joy. They have not joy. You have joy. They have not joy. You have peace. They have not peace. Have, have not. You have peace. They have not peace. You have a home. They have not a home. See, you understand it comes in many levels. So whatever it is you have and they don't, be a blessing to them and just be grateful for what you have and also be aware that they need something and reach out a prayer, a jacket, whatever it is, whatever it is, just let the Holy Spirit guide you. Give that person something to give them hope, to feel God's love in a dark situation. That's another way of letting God's light Another way of letting God's light shine through you to give them hope and a purpose to feel like going on another day But just what you did or just what you just said to them gives them strength to live another day When they felt like giving up All because you took the time you took the time to say God bless you brother Let me help you. Here's a here's a blanket or here's a jacket or here's a pillow whatever it is It's all about a giving heart, a loving heart. That's bottom line. If God is love, if God is love, and we are followers of Christ, automatically, people should feel a loving heart from us, a giving heart from us. They should see that in us before you even open your mouth. If we are followers of Christ, love should be all around us, all over us. And people should see, they see it. They come to you and want to talk to you because they see the love on you. They come ask you, can you pray for me? And you never said you're a Christian. Yet they came, can you pray for me? Because they see the light on you. You have light, they have no light. You have light, they have no light. And they see it in you. They see it in you. Hey, John, or oh John. So they see the love in you and they want you to to either pray for them or talk to them or give them hope. And that way you let God's love shine through you. You let God's love shine through you to bless somebody with just your light. It's all about being a blessing. It's all about being a blessing to someone who has not. However you can, however you can give light to someone who doesn't have hope, no light, no peace, no joy. A giving heart gives them something to feel better about themselves. I used there used to be a poem, actually not a poem. I used to give a person, whenever I gave them money, I might go back to doing this. I did this for years. When I gave a person a dollar bill or whatever, whatever I gave them, I would fold a piece of paper around the dollar bill. And what the paper said, feed a man, no, give a man a fish. Maybe you heard this. Give a man a fish and you feed him that day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Uh, Sheila, Chef Sheila, write this down. Give a man a fish 
and you feed him that day. Give a man a fish, give a man a fish, and you feed him that day. But if you teach the man to fish, you just fed him for a lifetime because now he knows how to get the fish that you gave him. Don't just give it to him, but teach him how to get his own fish. So when you're gone, he's still eating because you just taught him how to fish. Don't just give him the fish and feed him that day. Teach him the fish. And now he can eat all day, every day, because now you taught him how to get his own food. So I would write that on a piece of paper. I fold it up. I give them whatever money I'm giving them. I fold the dollar bill of whatever the money is in the paper. So they, I said, now, here's, I'm giving you this. I'm giving this. But make sure you read the paper. Make sure you read what the paper says as you take this. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. And most of the time they read it. Now, I have no idea if they understood it, but I'll try to let them understand. I'm trying to tell them, I, if I gave them money, I say, make sure you use some of this to help a friend. Make sure I'm giving, I'm giving money right now. I'm giving money. Make sure you use some of this money to help a friend out here. Even if, even a small part of it, whatever it is, just use some of this money to help somebody, a friend of yours. Even if you have nothing, they have nothing. I just gave you something and your friend has nothing. So use what I gave you and split it between the two of you. So I'm trying, that's the teaching lesson I would give them as I gave them the paper to let them understand the blessings are in sharing whatever it is, no matter how much money you don't have. The widow, the widow had no money. She had no money. She had just enough food and oil to feed her son and herself. That was, she had very little. Yet she still made the Elijah the food he needed. And that ended up being a miracle. So she actually gave more out of her lack than someone who has a lot and gave a little. For example, if a person, if a person has a thousand dollars in their hand, if a person has a thousand dollars in their pocket and they give the homeless person one dollar, if you if a, a person with a thousand dollars in their pocket gives a homeless person one dollar, that's one percent. <laughs> but if you got ten dollars in your pocket and you give a person one dollar, that's ten percent of what was in your pocket. So the person with ten dollars gave more than the person with one thousand dollars because the person with ten dollars gave ten percent that one dollar was ten percent ten percent of what he had in his pocket. And the rich man with a thousand dollars in the pocket gave one dollar was one percent. So I'm trying to let you understand. When God sees how we help people, when you give out of what you, when you give something and you have very little, that's big to God. That's big to God. You, you have very little, yet you love the person enough through God to help them with a little bit. Whatever I got, I got, I don't have much, but I'll give you this. I don't have much, brother, sister, I, have, I give you this. I don't have much, but I give you this. That he who is faithful in little is faithful with much. God looks at you how you do now. How do you act with money right now? He who is faithful with little will be faithful with much. So God say, wait a minute, I'm not gonna bless you yet. I'm gonna watch you. I'm not gonna bless you yet. I'm gonna watch how you act with money with very little. Do you help people even with little? Do you help people or do you shun them with little? If you shun them with little, that means you shun them with a lot. So why should God bless you if you shun people with little? He blesses you tenfold. It means now you shun a lot of people with much because your spirit is a spirit of shunning people. So the way to open the storehouse is when you give to others and God sees you have very little and you still help people. He says, man, let me bless this person with much. Because he's faithful with little, that means he'll be faithful with much. Let me bless him with overflow and let him bless other people the same way. So this is how God, as I get ready to close, this is how God sees a giving heart. This is how God sees a loving heart to give to others as you would have them give to you. That, that's, that's why I want to make sure we, when we leave this place, we see the world a little bit differently. To see the place for those especially who don't have. 
Don't look down. Don't look down at them. The word says, "They'll always be the poor in the land. They'll always be poor in the land." We just said it, and that's why it says, "That's why it says, there's always be poor in the land." I'm looking at verse eleven again. Therefore, I command you, you shall freely open your hand to your brother, to your needy, and the poor in the land. That is a commandment. For, a commandment for God is to be a helping hand, a giving heart. To help people. That's a part of God. That is part of God in us. A part of how God uses us to be a blessing to others. We say it every day. I'm blessed that I may be a blessing to others. I'm blessed. I'm blessed that I may be a blessing to others. However that however that means. Whether there's money, food. A good word, a prayer, when God blesses you, when God blesses you, let it flow through you to others. You're blessed to be a blessing to others. It's not just for you. The blessing is not just for you. It's to flow through you and bless others. He blesses all your need and the overflow, not for you, the overflow is to flow through you and bless someone else. Overflow. The overflow is not for you. The overflow is to help others. And when you understand that, we don't hoard, don't hoard the overflow. The overflow is not to be hoarded. The overflow is to be used to be a blessing to others. And therefore God will keep the blessings coming because he sees you're blessing others with he blesses you to be a blessing to others and let the blessing flow to you and then through you and bless others. And that's the key to how God sees money in this world. The money is not about you. The money is to flow through you to help others. To not hoard the money, but to share it. Too many people hoard the money and don't want to help anybody. And that is not a loving heart. That is not a giving heart. When you help somebody, even with little, the giving heart shows God, I don't have much, but I'll give you this. I don't have much, i give you that. So that right there, that statement, I don't have much. Like the widow, the widow said, I only have this. I only have um, flour and, and oil for me, my son, but I give you that. I give you a meal. And she got blessed with a miracle. So we got to do the same thing. We have to do the same thing. I don't have much, but I'll, I'll give you this. Whatever it is. However led by the Holy Spirit to be a giving heart. And I close, I close in Luke. Luke uh, 14. I close one verse, one more verse. Luke 14. I want to close with this one. Luke 14, 13, 14. Luke 14, verses 13, 14. It reads, thirteen and fourteen, verse chapter fourteen, verses thirteen fourteen. When you give a reception, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, since they do not have the means to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteousness. Now see, you, you're building two things here. You, sometimes you're setting up salvation. Remember, you're, what you do here on earth, one of the books is a book of works. So you're doing two things here. In a spiritual realm, your giving is going into the book of works at judgment day. Because you're helping people. It said, they don't have it. To, they don't have to give you. But verse fourteen, you will be blessed, since they do not have the means to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the high of the righteousness. The re that resurrection is judgment day, when we all come back, come back to be judged, and that act of kindness, 
That act of kindness right there will also be a reward. Sometimes your blessings are immediate here on earth. But more importantly, your blessings are in the book of life at judgment day as part of your salvation. So that's the other reason we always want to make sure our resume of giving, our resume of helping is going into the book of works at judgment day. Because God sees everything we do. God sees everything we do. How we treat people, good or bad. How we respect people or don't respect. God, my song says, God is watching you. God is watching everything. Don't get it twisted. The world is crazy right now. But guess what? God is watching everything. And God will deal with everything that's going on right now in this crazy world. So don't get don't get upset. Don't let the world don't let the world steal your joy. Don't let the world steal your peace. Hold your peace. Have no fear. Stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson, Lord. Bless each person right now, Lord, who hears this lesson. Help us leave this place with a more giving heart, a more loving heart, Lord. Knowing that every time we give love, money, time, that's all a part, Lord, that is all a part of allowing your light to shine through us to be a blessing to others, Lord. Help us to understand, Lord, that you're with us every step of the way. No matter what's going on, Lord, you are with us every step of the way, Lord. And like your word says, you'll never leave us nor forsake us. You'll be with us even to the end of the age. So we are never alone, Lord. We understand now we are never alone. And you're with us every step of the way, no matter what's going on in our life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you right now, Lord. We thank you right now. For taking care of each one of us in this fellowship live archive. We thank you right now for victory over every situation each person's facing right now as i pray this this corporate prayer lord this corporate intercessory prayer lord i pray this right now over the fellowship right now lord i pray this prayer lord for each person in the fellowship live or archive lord touch every prayer request lord touch every need every worry every stress every situation every family member lord just touch every situation right now in each Fellowship members life, live or archive, Lord. I stand in agreement with every prayer request. That every prayer request, Lord, shall come to pass. The fervent prayers of the righteous avails much. Hear our prayer, O Lord. And Father God, as we continue to come together as a fellowship, Lord, six days a week, daily, Lord, daily we pray, not only for world peace, but we pray for a supernatural hedge of protection to be over everybody, Lord, to protect us from any hurt, harm, and danger, from unexpected shootings, accidents, natural disasters, or violence of any kind, Lord. We pray, Lord, for a, a supernatural healing over the pandemic, the variants, and every other disease, Lord. We pray for our leaders, for justice, for change. We pray, Lord, for you to continue to wave your mighty hand over the spirit of rebellion, division, racism, and hatred. As we commit, Lord, as a fellowship, to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways, so you are here for heaven. Forgive our sins and heal our land. All these things we ask, Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God, fellowship. Praise God. The haves should be helping the have-nots. I want us to leave this lesson today with that 
mindset change if you haven't already done it. You may be doing it already. This is for anyone who hasn't been doing it. So just make sure we do a self-check to make sure we're not being judgmental, but being open and helping people. Don't be judgmental, but have an open heart to help and give to those who have not, however led by the Holy Spirit. However led by the Holy Spirit, amen. Before we close, I know someone's watching right now who doesn't understand why this fellowship is always on fire. We come together around the world and praise and worship fellowship. Having never met physically, but knowing we all love our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that makes us all brothers and sisters in Christ. But someone right now listening doesn't understand this kind of fellowship. So right now I'm going into the closing prayers and the prayer of salvation. As always, please no typing until after the closing prayers. Anything typed during the prayers is to need our respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to a person listening. And you've been here all the time. And you heard, you heard the, the prayers. You heard the praise. But right now, you can't connect. Because right now, your life is falling apart. Worry, fear. Stress, anxiety is all over you. Families turning away from you. Friends stabbing the back. And you may even feel like giving up a life itself right now. Yet somehow you find yourself on this channel and you have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here because God sees what you're going through right now, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And that is why you're here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to sin. And now your life is falling apart because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil's telling you once you leave God or you fail God, you can never go back. And that right there is a lie from the pit of hell. No one is perfect all have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and then fell back into sin, there's nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life. Recommit your life to Christ. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So right now, if you're a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, or right now your life is filled with depression, darkness, and hopelessness, or you just don't know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Either way, I want you to pray with me right now. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is Son of God. I believe He died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. Right now, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without giving to you first. Create in me, O Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that's not like you. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is right to receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and also convict us when you're not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into life. And he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day not just every Sunday every day spend time with God feed your spirit starve your flesh feed your faith starve your doubt every day and the more time you spend with God every day the more peace of mind you will feel in your life which is God let you know it's gonna be all right the next step is to repent and repent means change your ways from sinful ways to God's ways. And the more time you spend with God every day, 
the stronger you get. And before you know it, you're turned away from the simple things you used to do and instead seek God's will and God's way. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named unnamed, seen unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. We cast all you demonic spirits out of mind, out of our spirit, our home, our kids, our marriages, back to the pit of hell from which you came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord, restore every area of our life, Lord. Loose we consolation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose a supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual and emotional healing. By your stripes we heal, Lord. And now we confess, Lord, we confess every day, I believe I receive my healing. In Jesus' name, I believe I receive my healing. In Jesus' name, every day, confess it, thank him. Confess it, thank him every day. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose a supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough, a supernatural debt cancellation, Lord. Lord, let your blessings, Lord, your blessings of abundance, Lord, rain down, Lord, rain down on offensive and financial need, whatever it is, Lord. For you, O oh Lord, shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory. But Christ Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not want anything when the Lord is my shepherd. And say this part together, fellowship, repeat after me, for I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am blessed going in and blessed going out. I am blessed that I may be a blessing to others. I am out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I am a child of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt me or block my blessings in any way. In Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle they're praying for right now. And now we know. Every day we take time. Every day we take time to see it. Take time every day to visualize your miracle. See it. Believe it. And then receive it into your heart. And as you receive it into your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when, but because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, any day you wake up, could be a day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So expect a miracle every day. May the Lord bless you, keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face of vow approval upon you and give you peace. That you may be a blessing to everyone you touch and speak to. A blessing to everyone you pray over. A blessing to everyone you pass by and bless without opening your mouth. Because the love and light of the Lord is all over you. 24-7, 365, including leap year. So Father God, all these things we ask, Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. And the fellowship say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who good. Praise God. 
Amen, family. As we go forth, our mission is always to take the lesson into the day and do it. Learn the lesson and then do the lesson. Hear the lesson, do it. Hear it, think it, now do the lesson. Because we all hear him calling. We all hear him calling. Come family, say it together. Uh, do you hear him calling? Uh, do you hear him calling? <laughs> hey! Oh, Master, my Savior, I love you so. <laughs> hey, man, give a shout out, shout out, a shout out. Hey, gaming with faith. Hey, brother, gaming with faith. Hey, gaming with faith. Hey, man, gaming. Hey, Don, Sheriff Don, Linda, welcome back, Linda. Hey, man, hey, man, praise God. I got caught in already. I think I got, I think I got everybody else who came in. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen, Snurks. <laughs> we hear him calling. We hear him calling our name. Say it again, family. Say it again. Uh, do you hear him calling? Woo! Uh, do you hear him calling? That's right. Oh, Master, praise God, my Savior. I love you so. <laughs> Amen, 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 Don. Welcome back, Sheriff Don. Welcome back, brother. Amen. As always, thank you so much for your love and support of this ministry. We thank all the partners and supporters. We thank you for your donations. Thank you for supporting the ministry store. And we thank you especially for your prayers. Your prayers mean everything. We can't do this alone. The fervent prayers and the fellowship keeps us covered to come to you six days a week. And John and myself, we love each one of you from the bottom of my heart, all the ways you support the ministry. However it is, we thank God for a beautiful fellowship to come together around the world and praise and worship and fellowship. Amen. Amen. Uh, ladies, uh, ladies, hands up, ladies. Yay! Uh, ladies, make your face. Make your face. Yay! <laughs> hey, brothers. Hey, 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 Greg, Gary, Sheriff Don. Boo! Greg, Gary, Sheriff Don. Boo! Amen, brotherhood. The brotherhood in the house. Amen. That's what it's all about, family. That's what it's all about. Can we come together? Can we know what? We all hear. We all hear him calling our name, family. Say it again. Say it again. Uh, do you hear him calling? Woo! Uh, do you hear him calling? That's right. Oh, Master, praise God, my Savior, I love you so. <laughs> Say it again. Oh, praise God. Uh, tomorrow, what? Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tomorrow is what? Worship Wednesday. Come on back. A Holy Ghost party. Tomorrow, Worship Wednesday. Cardio praise. Burning calories as you praise God. Exercise time. Exercise and praise. Exercise and praise. Family, that's what it's all about. Loving Lord and praising God as you exercise. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Oh. All right, now come on. Come on. Say it together. Aha. I can mean it. Say it again. Mean it. Oh, praise God. Woo. Uh, do you hear him calling? Woo! <laughs> do you hear him calling? Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, Master, praise God. Uh, my Savior, I love you so. <laughs> Amen. Thanks, our Sheriff. Sheriff Dan, Tanya, Sheila, Erica, Dana, Nedra, Rodan, Sheriff Don, and my, my love and life. Captain John in your absence, and we pray for John and that connection. Anyway, we say thank God for all the sheriffs and John the behind the scenes. Amen. Amen. Because God is a good God. He'll turn every single thing around. Don't forget, and don't forget, leave a oh, don't forget, please leave a comment. Don't forget to hit like if this day was a blessing. If this day was a blessing, please hit like and don't forget to leave a comment. I answer every comment. 
and people are blessed by your comment. So when you leave a comment, people in archives are blessed by your comment and my response. So please, please hit like and don't forget to leave a comment. Call people are blessed by both comment and response. Amen, family. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen, brother. Thank you, Snooks. Amen, fellowship. Another great night. Give me night. <laughs> Another great day. Night wherever you're in the world. Another great day with the Lord. Having another great lesson to for us to walk that walk and talk that talk as we leave this place today. I'll be back tomorrow with great another what? Where's your Wednesday? Call your praise because praise is what we do, family. I'll see you tomorrow or I'll see you online. Either way, be there or be square. We love you guys. We love the Lord. i see you then. Bye bye. Yay! Boom!